So you might be wondering, what am I looking at? How come the screen is zooming in all the time? How come there's so much damage and so many debuffs going on? And how come one shot from these archers deal more than 100 damage? Hey folks, this is Shantran here, and today I'm going to be bringing you a faction build concept I call the Awesome Evil Angel Archers, where we have a bunch of elves for the visuals, with keen sighted for the plus 20% accuracy on physical ranged attacks, and adaptable for extra experience so we can reach rank 5 on our units faster. Specifically we're going to be focusing on the Dusk Hunter units here. We're taking high culture to get access to them and the Awakened abilities. When our Dusk Hunters become Awakened, they get plus one range, and we're going to be stacking as much range as we can, and as many abilities on our Archers as possible. This is as close to a meta build, I believe, as I've made so far. We get access to Alignment Agenda, so we're going to go for pure evil in order to have our units start combat in Awakened state. We're also getting the extra knowledge from the city buildings here, which is really, really nice. For society traits, we are going to take Runesmith because the um, unit enchantment cost reduction is insane. It says 30%, but the way it's implemented means that it's often going to be more than that. And the fact that it stacks multiplicatively with unit upkeep is going to mean that our units are going to be very, very cheap and very, very powerful once we have a lot of enchantments on them. The extra research cost reduction as well from this is going to be really, really powerful as well because we're going to be researching a lot of uh, unit enchantments. We are, for our other society trait, going to pick mana channelers. We are going to be playing this game in such a way that we're going to be summing in basically every single unit that we're using, except the ones we get from free. Draft is going to be entirely useless for us. So the summoning spell cost reduction here of minus 50% is going to save us a lot of mana in the long run. The extra abilities from this trait is basically useless for us. We do not use magic origin units. I'm going to start with Tomb of the Horde in order to get access to the build defining ability here, Summon Irregulars. This is the summon spell we're going to be using with every single point of mana that we have, uh, except for when we're casting unit enchantments or uh, other powerful abilities like uh, city buffs or racial, racial traits or stuff like that. We also get access to Spawnkin for plus 20% damage. This is great, we don't care about the extra units in our formation, we're not going to be taking damage, that much at least. We have uh, Battle Seeker training for an extra plus 20% damage, and we also get some, some fine spells here. The Houndmaster in this build is uh, a lot less enticing than he usually is, he's usually an awesome unit, but we are going to be actively avoiding him because his upkeep is going to be too high. We are going to choose Wizard King because everything it does is what we want here. The extra mana is great because mana is uh, going to be the limiting factor for our economy most of the time. We're going to get extra world map casting points, which is what we want. The more world map casting is, it's basically draft for us in this build. And of course, over channel is always an awesome ability. For appearance, I was going with, uh, with the red uh, thing for, for like a, a wave of blood flushing over the lands. We're going to be aggressive, play very aggressively. We're going to be warmongering, basically fighting all the time, every time, in order to be able to plunder provinces and gain to pure evil as soon as possible. For a uh, ruler weapon, I would suggest choosing the Guardia Sword and Shield to stand in front of your archers and help them defensively. Also because that means you start with Vigor, which is a support ability, and you want to be able to get to Spur of Action without respecking as fast as possible. You also get the Hero Mount, and I'm, I, I really prefer having mounts in the early game. Unfortunately, on uh, uh, my computer, I do not gain these things, neither the Vigor or the Hero Mount, so this is a horrible choice for me, and I will be choosing something else, but you should definitely go with this. For Tome Progression, our second Tome is going to be Tome of Enchantment. This is because there is the Seek Arrows that we want. There's also Sundering Blades and Spell Timber Shields, which are both the unit enchantments, and we therefore get to research them that much faster. Awakened Tools is nice as well. The next tome we're going to take is Tome of Amplification for the Amplified Arrows. This allows us to do a lot of tricks and it buffs our damage immensely at this early time. The Astral Pips are also not bad. 
Astral Blood is the next one we're going for, for Attunement Fortune, which is going to increase our critical hit. Amplify Minds is also a very important buff here that we want to, in order to get our knowledge rolling as quickly as possible. We're going to be churning through a lot of tier 1 books as the next. And the last thing we're going to pick up here is Frenzying Focus, not because we need it, but because it's a unit enchantment, so it will have lowered cost. After this, we go back down to a tier 1 book instead of continuing onwards. We're going to do something special here. Instead of going tier 1, tier 1, tier 2, tier 2, tier 3, tier 3, uh, straight for the tier 5 books, we are going to jump back down to tier 1 and take a lot of tier 1 and tier 2 books before we continue on to tier 3. This is to buff our archers as fast as possible. And because in the end, it's not going to cost us that much more knowledge, actually. Tomb of Cryomancy is... Uh, for the Frost Arrows, awesome spell. The Frost Blades are cheap and also buff up your Shield Dudes. Ice Coffin is a nice spell as well. The next one we're gonna go for is Tomb of Roots. We get the Poison Arrows here. We also get Poison Blades, which is cheaper, and a buff for our Shield Dudes. The Vine Prison is nice because, since we are mana channelers, this now only costs half the price in combat. Our last tier 1 tome is going to be the Tome of Pyromancy. We get the Fiery Arrows, we get the Searing Blade, both of these are cheaper and buff our units, and then we get some other stuff as well. For the first tier 2 book, um, I would suggest going for Tome of Scrying in order to get the Guided Projectiles. This is going to, be, this is going to allow you to shoot without um, bothering about all the trees and stuff that is in your way. Since you have so far reach with your Dusk, uh, dusk Hunters at this point, plus one range from Enchantment, Tomb of Enchantment, plus one range from Awakened, and plus one range if you have managed to get anyone to rank 5, and you should by this point, but easily. And they're gonna have a range of 7. If you do the trick with the ampli Amplified Arrows, you can reach, technically, sort of, a uh, reach of 10 by shooting on the ground and using the 30% extra damage. This means that you really do not want trees or other units to be in your way, and this helps with that. Mental Mark is also a nice enough buff. For the next tier 2 book, we have Tome of the Beacon to get access to Mighty Meek. Since we are not playing Prolific Swarmers, the Faithful trait is going to help those uh, going to help those of our units that is not in a hero stack get a, a little bit less upkeep, which is going to be nice considering you're stacking all of these enchantments. The plus one spirit damage on attacks for each unit tier of the target is also amazing once we're attacking a lot of tier 3 units and, and stuff like that. Coven Covenant of the Faith is the other reason we go for this uh, this early. Because we do want the, it's not 10 Imperium, it's 5, but we do want that. Next book we're going for is the Tome of the Inquisition. Here we get the Inquisitor's Seal, plus 10% accuracy and spirit damage for our archers. We also get Mass Condemnation, which is sort of a combination with this to get even more damage. And lastly, we're going to take the Tome of Artificing. We do this to get plus 30% critical hit chance, and more importantly, to get the extra Materium Pips that we need in order to get our Tier uh, tier 4 book later. You can also pick up Siege Magic here. It's going to be uh, at, at a discount, and the Bolt Repeaters are quite nice. For Tier 3 books, we are going to go with Tome of Teleportation. This does nothing specifically, except it gives you access to the Chrono Gate and stuff like Mass Recall as well. These are important overland travel options at this point. The Chrono Gate uh, specifically is a very nice teleporter that does not cost you anything, but instead grants you mana and knowledge, which is what you want. For the other Tier 3 book, take Tome of Pandemonium for Vessels of Chaos. We are at this point stacking a lot of um, debuffs on our targets with our archers. We have a chance to stack Burning from Pyromancy, our Fiery Arrows. We have a chance to stack Poison from uh, Tomb of Roots with the Poison Arrows. And we are stacking Marked because we are going to get the High Culture ability a Coordinated Attack, which means our archers is going to stack Marked uh, when they shoot as well. But after this, we're going to jump to Tier 4, where we're going to take the Tome of the Crucible. You may notice that we do not actually have the 6 pips by that point. We only have 5. We have the one from Runesmith and the 4 from the Tomes. We're going to make sure that our ruler has taken a single signature ability. Uh, summon Elemental is going to be the, the one you want to gravitate towards, but anyone will do. 
as long as you get the pips, because you do really want to get these meteor arrows. Plus five extra damage in an area of effect around your target is amazing, quite simply. After this, you can probably jump down and take the Tomb of Cycles to get Projectiles of Decay, another plus uh, flat damage on our um, arrows, and none of the rest of it really matters, to be honest. For Tier 4, what we're going to be going for is Tomb of Exaltations in order to get Angel Eyes, which means that our units on the Overland can now fly. This is going to be, this has been the, the weak point uh, for now that the armies are moving around a little slowly. So, um, so this is a nice pickup that we get by now. After this, you will take the Tome of the Chaos Lord in order to get Call Forth Avatar of Chaos and Demonic Onslaught. Demonic Onslaught is quite expensive, but it is an insanely powerful um, buff for your units, for your archers. They are gonna get kills, and the extra attacks means that you can finish off stuff that is low without having to spend an entire unit's turn on it. <laughs> Once you've gotten uh, this book done, you will drop back down and take Tome of Chaos Channeling, which is the last uh, relevant tome at this point. The reason we go for this one is to get the Golden Horde. You have been summoning Irregulars from the Tome of the Horde the entire game. So at the point where you get Tome of Chaos Channeling, you are now going to get access to Golden Horde instead and the Root of Chaos, which means that your Chaos spells are 20% cheaper to cast, which includes Golden Horde and Summon Irregulars. So at this point, you're golden. You also want, of course, a sign of plane because it's fun. These are the tomes that you want to be getting. For Imperium, for the Empire Tree, you can see uh, that I'm quite far out of a lot of different branches. This is because when you take a lot of early game uh, tier 1 books, you are going to be gaining more affinity than most other builds will. This I utilize to get access to some of the specific um, notes that are more powerful in this build. The first one I really want to get to is Impressment. This lowers the unit upkeep of all of our tier 1 units. We are only going to be using tier 1 units. So this is just a straight up minus 30% unit upkeep reduction, which is insane. Uh, the other really important one here, when you win in a battle, you have 50% chance of gaining a tier 1 or tier 2 unit that can be produced in a city. Free units, you get some tier 2 units, Half the time, you're gonna keep them around for a little while, and then you are gonna disband them. Because you do not want to pay the upkeep. You can easily uh, summon in more tier 1 units, and your Dusk Hunters are gonna be stronger than any tier 2 units this will summon. There's some other nice one here. Pillaging province takes minus one turn. If you get to the, Once you get to this, uh, it's gonna make your pillaging and your journey towards pure evil a lot faster. Other relevant ones, we, uh, the reason we took Tome of Crime anti early was to get access to knowledge extraction as soon as possible for the plus 15 knowledge per level of heroes defeated in combat. In the Astral Tree, we want access to Astral Inspiration for faster knowledge. We want access to Adaptive Research. During, since we are doing the thing where we have a lot of low tier books, it means whenever we have no low tier options to research and none of the spells we need from the high tier terms. We're just gonna reshuffle and uh, find something cheap to research so we can get on with the terms faster. Uh, extra knowledge when a unit gains rank. You have a lot of low tier units that you have summoned in with no ranks basically, so they're gonna get ranks very fast. Uh, where we're at here, ingredient exper experimentation and focus studies, extra research, extra mana. If you have been uh, taking your terms in the correct order, you should be able to reach these with a, before you reach the end of the spec. I did not do that in this playthrough. For the nature pips, there's uh, the usual two starting things here that we are interested in, soil tenders and fruitful integration. But they are not that important, to be honest, in this build. Materium also do not have anything really significant, but uh, Master Masons is a really nice one once you get access to it. And the extra seat slot can be amazing as well later game. For your hero build, we were talking earlier about the signature abilities. You need to get the one Materium in order to get your tier 4 tome. I forgot to mention that you also will need to get the one um, Chaos pip, Affinity pip, in order to get to your tier 5 Tome of Chaos, unless you switch up the order of the last two tomes and go Tome of Chaos channeling into Tome of the Chaos Lord instead. That's just something you can easily do. For the first ability you want to get, 
mana unchained if uh, it is available to you. This will both send you faster up the Astral Tree and it will allow a very, very sweet buff for your Archer units, plus three base damage and plus two strength and stacks on your entire stack of Archers from the beginning is <coughs> amazing. You get Battle Seeker training, you get stuff like Coordinated Strike I talked about earlier, Inspiring Leader. Combined with the impressment feat, this will mean that you have the maximum upkeep reduction on every unit in your hero stack. Because you're only going to be using tier 1 units, and the maximum upkeep reduction is 50%. You want stuff early on, like um, experience leader, because you want your units to level up as fast as possible. Precision training, obviously. Once you get access to teleportation, quick face to reposition your hero and still be able to use three pip abilities like summons and mana unchained. We want to get to spur to action as fast as possible. We get access to champion of the faithful once we get tome of the beacon. There's also some other nice abilities you get access to. Golem assistant from uh, our material book. The last one, as soon as it's possible, I'm gonna switch away from going support and going towards Weaver as soon as I have the spur to action because uh, Weaver is a powerful ability with your uh, once per combat stuff and your over channel as well. As an example of uh, the power of these units I'm gonna bring you this random level 10 hero which is going up with one stack of archers against uh, a triple stack of enemy units. We are Getting the Heimer off from the beginning here, as you can see. Moving into position, trying to make a line where all of our archers are going to be as close to the enemy as possible. This hero here is not my ruler and does not have access to mana unchained. We uh, condemn these guys to deal a little more damage. It doesn't cost a lot of mana. We start shooting on this side of the battle in order to not get... Uh, surrounded to be able to to take a position over here without the units getting too close to us it's going to turn out to not be that relevant in this case if we had wanted we could use 150 mana to cast killing momentum uh, to gain killing momentum here from the tier 5 tome and that would have made us able to kill these units all the more faster you can you can notice all of the we have some berserk units here that don't die so we've used the summoned units we get uh, a hatchling bell a summon an until and a golem assistant just to stand in front of our stuff here um they're gonna running around and and get buffed and they're also gonna go and shoot a bit at our archers but it's quite far for them so they're not gonna get that much damage in the next round is going to be the power round, so to speak. They have moved close enough that I can I can begin alphaing on them. Uh, as you can see here, we are wiping out like several units with one archer at a time. This is a good example. Now they've started routing, and uh, he just killed I think three things. We can now start moving forward towards them and taking out like the groups here. Um, there's an insane amount of uh, debuffs going out. There's an insane amount of. Uh, damage being carried over to other units and that's quite high base damage as well. Well the combat is almost finished at this point but I uh, do believe I want to make sure nothing gets away. We have uh, another Berserker here so I've moved the elemental closer to him so we don't have more damage from our archers and then we just finish them off and call it a day. Here you can see he, he took a bit of damage this guy. Um, from, from being a bit out of position. We're just going to clean up the rest of the units, uh, deleting this tier 2 that we got because we don't want to pay the upkeep. Normally I would keep him for this fight, but this is to show the, the power of the guys. And now we just auto come, but this is not a, a stack worthy of our attention, really. So, let's see. Yeah, there a little bit of damage spread out about stuff. It's great. We cleared up a lot of units now. So, five stacks of units done. Uh, no units lost, two units gained. We're going to keep this guy. He's, just, uh, he's a tier 1. Uh, unit and we're going to use him to engage uh, the last couple down here. That's the power of what we're working with. This is not turn 41 as it says. I believe it's turn 53 or something like that. So thank you for joining me if you have been. I've been Shantran and you've been awesome. So thanks and bye bye.